Okay, so we'll talk about the watershed and it will turn out that it uses the notions of widest path. Now, so far we studied shortest path. What's the relation between shortest path and widest path? Um, we looked at seed and segmentation previously. Um, the idea was that the user needs to give seeds or markers. And uh, then we would find from any pixel in the image um, the shortest path to every seed. And then we assign each pixel to one seed based on which one is closest. Now there are various definitions of um, what it means to be uh, or to have a shortest path. Um, there is the classical shortest path. Here the length of the path is given by the sum of the edge weights. And that's what we discussed so far. Today we'll talk about a problem which is variously known as um, the widest path problem or the bottleneck shortest path, the maximum capacity path or the minimax path um, where the length of the path is not given by the sum of the edge weights but by the single largest or single smallest edge weight. So for example, um, in the bottleneck shortest path problem, we're looking at um, limitations. So uh, a thin bottleneck is bad. In this case, it's the single smallest edge weight that matters if we're talking about um, maximum capacity path. It's the same. It's sort of the thinnest tube that matters, you know, if you want to pump something through a network. Um, and the minimax path, um, here it is the largest weight that matters. And that's the formulation I'm going to use today. So um, just as a reminder of seeded segmentation, um, I um, used um, this beautiful uh, demo here uh, by Benjamin Perret. And here it is. So you can load some image. Um, you see that uh, my mouse moves on the left image, but on the right image, you also see a dot. You also see some kind of pre-processing of the image. Um, we see some sort of boundary estimate uh, being used here. And I can now uh, give one click um, for the one class. I can give another click for the other class. And uh, so now each pixel um, had its distance measured um, to the green seed and to the red seed. And uh, assignments were then made, made based on some notion of shortest path. And now here, a particular kind of boundary estimate has been used and a particular kind of notion of um, shortest path, uh, which I don't want to go into now, just to recall you the principle of seeded segmentation. All right. Now, I here drew um, a one-dimensional example and um, so we have from left to right a one-dimensional image, from top to bottom um, the edge weight where low is good and uh, high is bad in the sense of distance. So, so a high edge weight means it contributes uh, to a large distance. And I now want to compute um, the distance, let's say, from the left seat. So if I use the conventional notion of shortest path, then, because the edge weight uh, around the seat is 1, um, so if I accumulate this edge weight now, if I integrate over it, I have a line that's increasing with a slope of 1. And suddenly the edge weight jumped to 2, so my cost now increases with a slope of 2. Um, then the edge weight is 0 for a while, making you know no contribution to my cost. Then it again continues with a slope of 1 and then even with a slope of 3 and then with a slope of 
1, and so on. Okay, so this is the distance from the left seat, the shortest path distance of all of these locations on the line from the left seat. Let's do the same for the right seat. I will align this a little bit better with the coordinate system here, like so. Good. It's a little bit too high. Um, try again. Better. Good. So um, I'm now computing this cumulative distance from the right seat. Continues with a slope of 3, continues with a slope of 1, slope of 0. All right, I hope this is uh, more or less what happens. And um, so now we have cumulative costs to the left seat, cumulative costs to the right seat, and um, where these um, seats intersect, this is where we have our decision boundary. So here I infer that this should become the boundary between my two segments. Okay, this was for the conventional shortest path. Now let's do the same for the widest path. Um, for the widest path, I'm starting again from the left seat. Um, the cost we said for the widest path is given by the maximal edge weight here. Or the cost of the minimax path is given by the widest edge weight. So here from the seat, it immediately jumps to 1. And then the cost, well, it stays at 1, because 1 is the biggest cost that I've seen so far. Now it jumps to 2, and then it stays at 2. And at this position, well, we just keep the worst case cost that we've seen previously, which is this one here. And then it jumps to 3, and it continues there until infinity. So that's the minimax distance to the left seat. We can similarly compute the minimax distance to the right seat. And it goes on. All right, and if we now again look where these two costs are the same, well, um, they happen to be the same on this plateau. Now, where on this plateau to cut? Um, you know, according to the minimax path cost is not strictly defined. Uh, let's for now, you know, say we either pick a point where the costs are the same arbitrarily. So that means uh, inside uh, this uh, interval here. So I'm arbitrarily taking this point here where the two costs are the same. And I find that this should be my segmentation boundary. Right, so we, we notice that maybe unsurprisingly, if we use a different different definition of shortest path, well, we will find different segments. And uh, notice now that these have very different characteristics. Um, so the minimax path um, only depends on the locally best or worst case that you come across, while the shortest path it keeps adding up as you go. And this can be a problem. Um, so if you have uh, long, thin segments, if I put a seed here, and if I put a seed there, and I want to segment out the long, thin thing, and uh, let's say uh, background, and then unless my boundary indicator is perfect, um, there will be a lot of costs that uh, need to be accumulated as I walk along this uh, thin object. 
and uh, hence it is almost sure uh, if this thin process is long enough um, that my resulting segmentation will not be the one that you desire um, but it will maybe look something like this yeah? so it hasn't walked sufficiently far along this thin object now with the minimax path definition that is not a problem um, the costs don't accumulate it's more dependent on an extreme value statistic but on the other hand um, if you have a uh, no matter how tiny gap in the boundary then your segment will bleed through this gap so that means qualitatively um, these two notions of distance they lead to very different results in computer vision.